I have been using Foundry Virtual Tabletop for some time now to run my online D&D games, but I also use it for my home game, not just as an accessory to run games, but as a campaign management tool. Finding a good campaign management tool can be difficult to find something that's the right fit for you. And for me, being someone who already was using Foundry as a virtual tabletop, it was a very easy transition to make. And I eliminated a lot of other tools because Foundry being designed for D&D and to organize D&D games already just was a perfect fit. So today I want to show you how I am using Foundry as a campaign management tool to run my home games. Let's get into it. Hello everybody, I'm Joe and this is the DM Toolbox, your go-to place to get all the tools you need to enhance your D&D games. Now before we get started today, as always, if you enjoy this video, if you enjoy what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on this video. It really helps me out to build and grow my channel. Also make sure you're following me over on Twitter at Toolbox underscore DM and on TikTok at DM Toolbox. I am going to be doing some more giveaways, hopefully, in the near future, and that's a good way to be alerted to what's going on with those. A viewer recently asked me what I use as a campaign management tool. How do I organize all my notes and my thoughts and my maps and my characters and keep all this in a way that I can easily access and run my games? Well, there's a lot of different tools that I've used over time. Uh, I used to use Realmworks, which I thought was a fantastic tool but it started to get a little dated and then uh, Lone Wolf ended support for it and it just wasn't a good fit anymore. I tried Microsoft OneNote, I've tried World Anvil, I've tried a few others and none of them really fit what I wanted for my own style, my own games. Uh, and then I thought about it, I said, you know, I'm already using Foundry to run my online games and it does everything I need. Can I make this work for my home games? And the answer was yes. In fact, uh, it's so such a good fit it's so well designed for it because it's already doing it for your online games the only difference is i don't need maps and tokens what i have in foundry is this very organized system of journal entries and folders of npcs of items of tables of maps that i can easily access and link together to be able to navigate my games really easily even at the table so when I am running a home game, I have a little laptop that I can sit behind my DM screen with and I can just go through and read stuff right off of that to my players and make references. And when they ask who a certain NPC is, I can search it because it's all on a computer and I can find these things really, really quick. So let me give you a little view here of how I do this. Okay, here we are looking at my instance of Foundry. Now, this is one I threw together today just to kind of give you a demo. So it's not nearly as flushed out as a full campaign might be for me, but I just want to kind of show you. Now, another thing to note is that uh, Wednesday this week uh, on uh, August 31st, 2022 is when I recorded this, uh, Foundry version 10 dropped. So I was kind of waiting for Foundry version 10 in order to show you this because it has some very, very nice new features in it that really enhance what I've been attempting to do. And I absolutely love it now. So what we have here is the campaign setting from AAW Games. On their website, they have this map and a bunch of information for free about their campaign setting. So I grabbed some of that just to show you how you can do a little world building. Um, so if you had your own world, obviously you can kind of do the same. So what we have up here is this journal section, and this is where uh, we keep most of our notes. This is where all the, the bulk of our, our information is gonna go. So what I did was I created a couple of folders here. I created one for countries and I created one for towns and cities that will be maybe within those countries. And then I created uh, one for some important NPCs. Now, when it comes to NPCs, mobs, you know, monsters, whatever, we actually have this section over here where we would have stat blocks, actual stat blocks. And we're gonna get to that later, but you know, not every NPC needs a stat block. Sometimes you're just looking for uh, more just informational stuff. So that's why I also have this over here. Um, so let's take a look and start with countries. And what we have here is the Cadillac Kingdom. So that is this region here in this top right corner of the map. And if I go in here, what we see now is this journal entry. And what it used to be was that I would have, you can see here I have all these different pages. So I have one for the capital city, one for one of the villages, uh, some of the other towns, another city. 
those would all have been separate entries in here on the right within this folder. In Foundry version 10 now, we can have a single entry for a category, in this case, the Cadillac Kingdom, and then have multiple pages within there. So right here, we have the first page about kind of the high level view of the kingdom itself. And you can see I have inline links to different locations. So when I talk here about the Serpent Lake, I can click on this and pull up the Serpent Lake uh, you know, information, which is in another entry. Um, so it makes it very easy to interlink things. Now it won't auto link. It won't just sense anytime I type Serpent Lake and automatically link it. I actually have to link something and I'll show you how to do that. But uh, it's extremely handy to have, right? So we can see here, I can go through the different pages and we can see different stuff. Uh, this map here is actually right out of Rise of the Drow. I pulled that one, but there was another map I'll show you. But uh, what we can do as well is if we wanted to just kind of see it more as, as a full page, like what this entire entry looks like together, I can click this view multiple pages and now we can scroll through all the pages um, like that as well. So we can have everything in kind of one big entry or we can separate them out into individual pages if we want to keep it more organized. Um, another one I have here is Vic Mordier, which is kind of over here, and the Cadillac Kingdom has kind of taken over a lot of it. So actually, if you're in here, you see a reference to Vic Mordier. When I click on that, it pulls up this en this entry over here. So we've got here uh, I got a, kind of a zoomed in map just to show you the region. Uh, and then we have all some different information. We have history, geography, and I've inlaid images right into it, which is great. You can inlay the images. Um, you can also have separate images if you wanted. Uh, so if there was, uh, for instance, I think I did it on here. Um, nope, I did it, uh, maybe I did it on the Silent Forest. Uh, yeah, in the Silent Forest, uh, we have you know some different information here as well. And you can have you know a separate map entry and things like that. So uh, let's see here if I go into this one uh, right here. So this actually is its own. Uh, it's a map type entry. Um, let me close this background here. Um, so this is actually a map type entry. So when I add a page, I can do a text page, which most of these are, but I can also do an image. I can do a video. I can inlay a video. If you have a YouTube video or something like that you want to inlay or even a PDF. So if you've got like a, a PDF of a rule book or something like that, that you don't have necessarily in Foundry, but you want to reference it quick, you can link your PDF and view a PDF right within Foundry, which is super, super handy, right? Um, so super nice way of doing things. Uh, so you can see here, like with uh, with this, I got the map, we have the overview, I've got some people here. So here's the mayor of the town. Uh, I can click this and pull up his information here. So that's where I come into the uh, NPC section here. And then uh, I actually did link a stat block for him. So I said the mayor uses the human chieftain stat block. So when I click on that, it pulls up the stat block. Now, if I wanted to, I could have named this stat block after the mayor and had it like a separate stat block form and put all this information in the biography as well. But I just wanted to show you how you can interlink the two different things. So that's why I set it up this way. But definitely a few ways you can do it. Uh, you'll see here I have this economy section, nothing under it. So uh, if I go into the multi-page view, though, it looks a little different now because when I come down to the economy section, uh, you can see here the subsections. And you notice here on the on the left, these are indented. So if I go into the fishing one here and I edit it, you'll see it says level two. I can also make it a level three. Um, so like let's say I wanted lodging to be a level three and it becomes a subset of fishing. Um, so if I did that and saved it, uh, now you'll see how lodging goes in another layer. So you can definitely do that. And you see how the heading changed a little bit. It looks a little different now. Uh, so you can definitely do that where you um, kind of layer stuff in and make subsections. So it's another super useful tool for your organization. So you can start to see how very organized this is. Now, like I said, I just put this together today. So I do not have uh, as many links and stuff as I might normally have if I was really building this out in detail and over time. Uh, what's nice about this, though, is it's very organic. As I build it, as I grow it, I can reference back to other things. You can see here, I've, uh, I can do some formatting and bold stuff and things like that as well, um, you know, make stuff pop out. Um, so you get this very organically growing world building over time and you can you know, organize it how you want, keeping things, you know, having fewer entries on the right makes it a lot easier. Now, if I had this, let's say this was a huge uh, thing with, you know, 30, 40 entries and I wanted to find something, I say, well, 
uh, what do I have on their government stuff? I can type government and find that entry. Um, so that's really, really nice, right? Uh, I could type, um, you know, um, you know, religion and find that page. So uh, you can set stuff up like that. You can also have as a first page for a section, you could technically have like a table of contents and have links to each of the pages, but that's not something you really need anymore with this sidebar view. And, you know, we can just scroll through and go through page by page. Or like I said, we can flip to this view and just scroll down. Um, so it becomes very handy. Now, you see here, I have a world map. So we have scenes in, um, you know, in Foundry. Uh, so if we were playing, you know, uh, online, like, you know, I could show this map to my players or we could have a battle map like I have up here. But um, in this case, it's just a world map. Uh, and, you know, again, for world building purposes, I don't care what my players can see or not. And for, you know, this is just for me. Um, let's say here, you know, I've got the uh, Cadillac Kingdom and I have Vic Mortier. And I want to make some notes on that. Uh, I can do that. So coming to the journal notes section down here on the, on the left over here, um, I have a journal note that I dropped here. Clicking on this opens up the information I have on the, on, you know, the kingdom. It'll open up to the last page I was on. Uh, so it remembers where I left off. So if I wanted to add another one of these for Vic Mortier, I could just drag and drop Vic Mortier right here. And I feel like that icon is too small. So I'm just going to up that to 100 pixels and I will update that. And there it is. So now I have that on the map and I can hide it if I want. Um, uh, come up here and they disappear. Um, so however I want to do that. Uh, and then uh, I got the Silent Forest over here. So let's drop the Silent Forest one on there and we'll set that one to 100 as well. And there we go. So you can see how we can start to, you know, make it so I can just come to the map and like, oh, my players are over here. Let me, what do I have in the Silent Forest? Oh, yeah. OK. And who's the ruler of the Silent Forest? Oh, yeah. It's that it's the matriarch of the elves right here. His name is Howell Bar uh, Baran. So uh, really, really handy. And you can see here again where I have some indents here for the significant characters and stuff like that so it, it again it's a, an organically growing very well organized kind of built for this um let's take a look too at actors or you know npcs and monsters okay so coming up to the actors tab up top you can see i have three different actors in here um you know and we can build more um now these are custom ones that i pulled from rise of the drow which is aaw's massive uh you know adventure campaign setting but you know we have standard srd monsters as well so you know uh let's say that i am building out a dungeon instead so maybe i'm going to create a folder here and i'm going to call it uh dungeons um and we're going to create an entry here for uh you know this uh this dark dungeon um, it's going to be the name of our dungeon. And, you know, I start adding pages with, you know, uh, areas of it. So we have the entrance. And then I just want to say that uh, in the entrance, a group of goblins is waiting, right? Um, but I want to have easy access to the goblin stat blast. I don't have to open my monster manual or have a uh, card or anything like that on the table. Uh, because goblins is a standard SRD monster, I have here under my compendiums, I have all the SRD monsters, items, spells, everything is built into here. So I have very quick reference to find those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab goblins and we're gonna go ahead and highlight this and drop it on and there we go and save. And now if you look, here it is. So a group of goblins is waiting. So pull it up, here's my goblin stat block, their features, everything I need is right here. So uh, that makes it easy as well. Now, granted, these are just the SRD ones built in for obvious reasons, but you can build your own monsters very easily just by going create actor and you want an NPC type actor. And we're going to, you know, create, um, you know, a giant goblin. There's going to be some homebrew monster I made or something from the monster manual. And I can just create that monster here. And here he is in the side. So uh, again, really handy. Uh, we can also show this art. Like I say, okay, well, you see this, this guy here, he's this big tall guy with a with a you know furry hat and a hammer. Um, I can you know show uh, my players the art for this guy. So by right clicking over here, I can just say view character artwork, and I can see this. And then when I click show players, this picture will show up on my uh, for my players. Now they would have to be logged in or something, but at my table, I usually have a TV on the table that I use for maps. So I might actually be showing them this map on the table so they can see it. And then when it comes to handouts or artwork, I can just display it right there on that map for them. 
So that comes in a lot of handy. So we use, you know, a, a, a TV as a map and we put physical tokens on there. And I might even put like trees and rocks and scatter on there as well to kind of give it a little bit more dimension. So it's something else that you absolutely can do. Uh, Foundry also handles music. So I could have like playlists and stuff like that that I could play on and, you know, have it going out either my computer speakers or my TV speakers or a Bluetooth speaker I have connected or whatever. So I have all these tools just built right in. So I think you're starting to see how this can be a very useful campaign management tool. We have not talked about how to use Foundry to run your D&D games, to play d and uh, that, That's a separate topic. There's tons of videos on it. Maybe I'll do some eventually. But you can see how you, the GM, can do your campaign prep and your world building right in here. Now, what's cool about that, too, is you know it's in here now. It's organized. And let's say you're playing at home and you're doing your thing and, uh, I don't know, suddenly some global pandemic hits, something crazy like that, and you have to move your games online, you're kind of ready to go. Uh, and that's kind of what happened with us is we were playing uh, at home and I was using it like this. And then when we had to make the move online, you know, we just created character sheets and Foundry and we went and was ready to go. I had all the maps. I had all the information. It was a super quick and easy transition for us. Nowadays, we're splitting our time. We're going to play you know, maybe once a month at my house and the other couple of weeks uh, we'll play online because, you know, not everybody has the time to drive out to my house all the time. So if you want to do split sessions, it's another great way to do it. I'm hoping that you guys find this useful. I really like it. I think there's a lot of potential with Foundry. I feel like I barely scraped the surface really of what you can do with it. But the important stuff to remember here is how organized these journal entries are, especially in this new version 10 and how we're able to link to other journal entries and, and stat blocks and things like that. Uh, I could pull up you know, this, the town right here and see the map. Um, you know, We can do all sorts of other cool stuff with it to just keep ourselves very, very organized and efficient, and most importantly, quick at the table. So if you like this, uh, let me know in the comments, have you used Foundry in this way uh, or any other virtual tabletop or what do you personally use for campaign management? Are you just a, I have a three ring binder kind of person? Do you like uh, World Anvil or uh, Obsidian or one of the other you know many tools out there? Tell me about it. I'm kind of curious. So that's it for today, guys. Until next time, roll those dice.